Hello everybody. So about a month ago, I made a video where I analyzed uh, the biggest market cap stocks in the in the semiconductor space, and uh, my, my conclusion on this was that I liked AMD the most, and my second most liked stock in the field uh, was Nvidia, um, and I concluded that TSMC was great for for uh, more of a, more of a value investor, more of a long term investor, fine stock, fine company, just growth too slow for me uh and i was really worried about intel in that video and and you know i, I wasn't i wasn't very kind to intel i, I thought intel intel wasn't doing a very, very very good job um and today you know we've we've got we've got the news that intel is is cutting dividends by, by two thirds and per, per my calculation we're ending a 10-year streak of dividend growth um and so my question for this video is, you know, what is the present value of a business uh, that has predictably and consistently, where you can predict and consistently predict a decline in revenue growth? Like this company has been declining revenue, declining revenue year after year after year after year. Uh, and is Intel right now just, just throwing good money after bad? taking the dividend away to put good money after bad and, and you know i feel bad because this is a stock that if you're not in you're, if you're not into technology you see the dividend you see the payout ratio you're going to buy this stock a lot of people right um if you look at the dividend summary of this company they were paying a 5.6 percent dividend and you see the data and you see that they've increased the dividend by about five to six percent every year uh, right, it's a great retiree stock, 79%, plus it, Intel has a good reputation. It's been around for 50 years, right? I mean, there's no, there's no issues for, for Intel. There shouldn't be any issues. Uh, and when you when you look under the hood, you realize that, no, Intel, Intel is in trouble. They keep losing market share to AMD. AMD is winning the CPU market. And, you know, this is kind of, um, you know, the, the reason, if you've seen my channel for a while, you, you know that I don't like dividend investing. I'm very, very wary of dividend investing in general. Uh, although I used to like it when I first began investing because it's so appealing on the surface. Um, but what you can see here is that this is a comment that I saw on a news platform preparing this video or on a different news, news site. What you can see right here is, you know, this commentary, which is typical of so many investors in Intel, you know, recently started accumulating, right? Short-term pain, long-term gain, made good money in the past, in 2008, made good money in the past, you know, uh, and made a nice profit, you know, and you're paid to wait, you're paid to wait. How many times do you hear this in the dividend world? Do you hear this justification to buy a struggling business that you're getting paid to wait? Well, guess what? When a company does not have its founder at the helm again, you get big issues with CEOs who try to focus on things like empire building and try to focus on just the wrong strategies. And I believe that's what is happening to Intel. They're focusing on the wrong strategy. And then you have a news like today where they're cutting the dividend by two thirds, right? By 65%. Um, and, you know, if, if you're a dividend investor which i believe is a big share of the customer of the shareholder base of intel is dividend investors i believe you're a dividend investor you see that you're going to cut the stock because you don't want to be in a turnaround stock turnaround stories are much riskier than a, than a steady eddy dividend story right you're in your 60s your 70s you're retiring you want to invest in a stable company this is this is a company that's going into a very very risky turnaround and you know let me go through it let me go over the turnaround so if you go to the press release which by the way is written sneakily like it's a very it was a very sneaky press release they're like oh uh, intel declares 12 cent dividend and changes in, in capital structure or capital allocation. Changes in capital allocation. Well, well, well guess what? That's, that's really a, a, a way to make the news sound better. It's not that. No, you're cutting the dividend quite a bit. And really, the reason that you have to ask yourself is, what is the number one reason for the cut? Well, they need to save costs, right? They need to keep cash within the business, which is not exactly what, what, a, share, what, what a dividend investor would want. So they need to keep cash in the business you know, um, and be, that's because they want to invest that cash. That's why we want to keep it in the business. This company could have been a steady eddy, slowly declining for 10, 15 years, and then if it keeps paying a dividend, even though it slowly declines, you know, you could make a good return. The problem is that when you take 
billions in dividends away from the shareholder and you invest in Intel, you have to trust that the CEO of Intel is going to be a better capital allocator than you as the shareholder, right? And if you're just living, living off these dividends, the capital allocation is you're, you're allocating that capital towards yourself. So that could lead to malinvestment, right? And it's all, it's all about what is Intel going to do with the newfound billions that it saves now that it doesn't have to pay that dividend that it just cut? Well, what are they going to do? Well, what we're going to do is, is very simple. They are looking at, and I believe this is the wrong idea, they are looking at investing in foundries. So Intel is in this odd situation where they are both the designer of chips and the, the maker of chips, but they don't make all of the chips because they go with a lot of a lot of third parties as well. But what do they do? They're they're doubling down on the foundries. So they're gonna invest billions of dollars in their own foundries, and then they're gonna invest in a partnership with Brookfield. This is a 51%, 49% partnership with Brookfield to invest in even more foundries. And they also announced recently many, many investments throughout the US, in Phoenix, in Ohio, and they also announced many investments in Europe. And, you know, don't get me wrong, like I think Intel, like Intel is doing something wonderful for the West uh, and for the USA in general. Like this is, this is sure, this is wonderful for the USA. And, you know, you know, I'm, I'm soon to be a, an American, a US citizen. And, and, you know, I'm very proud to see Intel really helping out the US by building on these manufacturing facilities. But is this the best for shareholders? Is this the best for shareholders, right? Uh, well, I don't think it's the best for shareholders. I think that's going to destroy capital for shareholders. And clearly, I believe this industry, companies like, AM, companies like AMD and Nvidia have figured out how to be efficient companies in this industry. The way the semiconductor industry is set up nowadays is you have giant intellectual property engineering firms, and those would be AMD or NVIDIA, and they design amazing products, which they then contract to foundries. TSMC mostly, Global Foundries, which was the spin-off of AMD, uh, or Samsung. So they typically will, 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 will create these amazing products and they'll subcontract out the manufacturing of these products, right? Intel is stuck in the middle here. Intel does both. In the, Intel does a little bit of contracting and a little bit of its own manufacturing. And they are taking the strategic turn of doing more and more manufacturing themselves and actually manufacturing the, the chips themselves. Um, and, you know, I'm sorry, but I don't think that's the way to go in, in, in the semi-industry. In fact, if you know anything about AMD, you know that AMD used to be structured just like Intel. And what did AMD do? AMD spun off this factory and decided to become fabless, i.e. it doesn't own foundries, it just contracts out the manufacturing. And when AMD became fabless, right, it joined the ranks of a company like NVIDIA and was able to grow at amazing speeds and create amazing value for growth-oriented shareholders. If you look at the return, this is what happened. AMD, by the way, just like NVIDIA, is in the top 10 returns in the S&P 500. But if you compare a pure play like AMD, right, you're at 40% average annual return over the past 10 years. If you look a pure play foundry, albeit the best foundry, right, amazing mode, the best foundry, you're at 20% average annual return, right? I'm a growth investor. I'm trying to, I'm trying to grow my portfolio. I'm going to choose... The, the, the giant IP and engineering firm and chip design firm. I want to I wanna be in the, in the intellectual property uh, space, right? I want to be in the space that designs these chips. I don't want to be in the space that manufacturing these chips because manufacturing is very complicated, very hard. Manufacturing has much lower margins. Um, and when I see Intel taking away the dividend that a lot of shareholders bought Intel for that dividend. A lot of dividend growth shareholders bought Intel, right? In fact, much of the video is about Intel, is about investing for that dividend. It's taking away the dividend to invest in foundries, to invest in the less profitable side of the business. So, you know, I am, I am, I am concerned. I am concerned uh, that this is not the, the best strategy because when you, when you look under the hood and when you think about 
investing in foundries. First of all, this is a very interesting um, uh, forum that I found about an internal email uh, with a setback where the, the, the lead uh, for, for Intel foundry services resigned uh, because probably of this crazy shift towards more m more foundries. There's probably some dysfunction going on at, at Intel. But any, anyways, the head of their foundry division resigned. Very, very interesting, right? But this is what worries me more when you, when you really think about it is that... Um, so, so, so far, most of the chips have been made in, in, in Asia, you know, Taiwan, um, Korea, South Korea, a lot, Taiwan, you know, Samsung and, and, and TSMC are really the best, uh, best chip makers out there. And so, of course, this is great for the West. Like, this is great for America. This is great for Europe. Uh, Intel is going to invest and create foundries. Uh, and that's wonderful for the West. And I'm very happy as a, as, a, as a citizen of the West, of the West, I'm very happy about that. But as a shareholder... I have to be aware of a few things. There will be huge investments needed. Huge investments. That's why the dividends cut, because there's huge investments needed for a business that is not going to have the returns of a fabulous chip manufacturer, right? There will be l huge learning curves to go through, right? The Asian manufacturers, TSMC, has done all of the mistakes in the world. They've gone through those learning curves, right? Intel has not gone through those learning curves just yet, or at least not at the scale that it wants to become, right? Not at the scale of a foundry it wants to become. And also, even though I believe in the long term, labor costs are not going to be a problem because these factories are mostly going to be automated, in, in the medium term and short term, labor costs are going to be a major problem, right? It's going to be even less profitable to make these chips in the USA and in Europe. So as much as I am happy that these chips are going to be made here, uh, I, am, uh, I, am, I, I am a little worried that this is not a very, very good investment. And this is, the t I'm sure going to show you the type of video that Intel puts out, which really, which really puts me worried, would put me worried and really steers me away of the investment. Uh, this is an example uh, of Intel Newsroom, where the 11 months ago where it talked about all of the very, 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 very strong investments that we are making in Europe. Keep in mind, they, they do the same type of uh, really strong investments in the US. They did something with Phoenix, with Ohio. Uh, they, they did similar huge investments in the US as well. Yeah? That's why the dividend is going away. Plus, it's a company that's going to get in debt to do all of these investments. Um, but when, I, when I, and I looked at this video entirely, and I suggest you look at it, you know, it's all about you know, congratulating each other, being the best at innovation, best at this, best at that. And if you look, you know, I don't see any discussion of next generation designs, right? I don't see any discussion of two nanometer or one nanometer. I don't see any discussion of where you think the chip design is added. I don't see any engineering content. I don't see any geeky content. What I see is all about how good this is going to be for, for, in this case, Europe. But if you were to look at Intel marketing for the U.S., it would be like all about how good it's going to be for the U.S. So they talk about the tens of billions of dollars they are going to invest. They talk about the tens of thousands of jobs they are going to create. But there's no discussion of like fundamental issues. For example, we know that for a company to grow manufacturing exponentially, for manufacturing to um, be as profitable as, say, software, you need to have a single, highly centralized, huge factory. This is what we see Tesla do, right? This is how Tesla is able to achieve almost software-like margin on hardware because they have giant industry clusters where they just manufacture in one spot and then you see you, 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 when i when i see how they plan their european operations but i could i could make the same criticism for U, u.s operations it's all it's spread out all over the place like it's all it's all clustered across many countries like how are you going to coordinate how are you going to achieve scale? Uh, and again, I, I get the feeling sometimes that the CEO is engaging in empire building. And in the video, you see, you know, you, you see leaders drinking champagne and being like, "Yeah, we're going to invest all of these billions. This is going to be so great. This is groundbreaking." But in the meantime, there is no discussion of the future. There is no discussion of what's going to be the two nanometer chips. There's no discussion or what's the role of the CPU in the future. Where is the CPU added? What's the data center? There's none of these fundamental technical discussion and and i assure you if you look at the keynotes of lisa su or uh, the, the, the the grand nvidia event every year that jensen puts out in september jensen huang the ceo of nvidia you see a stark difference stark stark difference you have on the one hand people who empire who really in my view 
you know, engage in empire building and, and you're trying to hire more people, bring in more people because it's better as a CEO to have a very big organization. So you're, you're, you're taking the capital, investing it, investing it, investing it, just throwing money at the problem, right, at the expense of shareholder without much discussion of technology, fundamental discussion of technology. And then you have uh, presentations like Lisa Su or Jensen, which is just all about tech, all about geeky stuff. Like that's literally all someone like Lisa Su or Jensen talk about it. They're all about tech and what's the future and where the future is headed and how, you know, they get all excited about the tech. At some point, you know, if you have the best manufacturing facilities, if you if you don't make the leading products, the customers are not going to be there. You need to be able to make the leading products. And, you know, case in point right here, uh, when I look at the news and when I look at the advancement of chips, you know, you can see that AMD, but this is true for NVIDIA, they are at the cutting edge and they're working on next generation chips. And uh, Intel is actually struggling with five nanometer chips. And clearly they keep delaying products that are already out there with NVIDIA. They keep delaying. So they have like, you know, a five year, they're five years late. Like, what are they doing? You got to focus on the technology, right? You have to focus on the technology. You're not, you're not a firm. Your, your purpose as a firm is not to create the biggest structure possible in the West. That should not be the goal as a corporation. You're not trying to create the biggest chip maker in the West. No, your goal as a corporation should be to create the best product. And as a consequence of creating the best product, then you will achieve the biggest structure, the biggest factory, the biggest business, the most amount of jobs, right? I don't see enough discussion of product of Intel. And I am worried and I am not surprised that the product is not resonating with the consumers. I am not surprised that data centers, that gamers, PC users are moving to the AMD solutions left and right. I am really not surprised because of what is happening right here. Um, so again, and lastly, this is my, this is my my last question: is what do you think we think is going to happen to the share price of Intel? Well, I think it's going to keep struggling. I think it's going to be keep struggling. Uh, I think the you know the kind of a stereotypical retiree would invest in a company like Intel when they see their dividend cut two thirds. They're just going to move on. They're just going to sell that stock and move on. And you're going to move to a shareholder base that's not going to be a dividend oriented shareholder base. You're going to move into a kind of a stale shareholder base of a stock that's just in the broad indices. Uh, and this is a kind of company that can just just see a slow decline as as a part of broad indices. And by the way, this is one one of the reasons why why I believe stock picking is a great idea, because you know I I I, I believe you know with a little effort, maybe you can't pick the winners, but with a little effort you can eliminate. Um, the the obvious firms that have issues. Uh, I think with a little effort you can eliminate that. And in, in my view, uh, Intel has issues. I, I could see a, I could have seen a path for Intel what would have been much better, which is spin off the factories, spin off the, spin off the, the foundry, spin them off, do a third party company and become an engineering only company and become fabulous, just like AMD and Nvidia, and go compete as a fabulous corporation. Don't triple down your, your investments in foundries because that's so expensive that's so risky uh, and even though it's great it, 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 it's great for the west and i'm very happy about that as a as a, as a, as a citizen of the west uh, as a shareholder i really really want to stay away um, so anyways that's my conclusion uh, on intel you know I, I hope it gives you a, a little insight into how i think about this stuff you know, I realize Intel, a lot of people love Intel, so don't hate me too much if I criticize your stock. Um, but anyways, not investment advice. Um, please like, please subscribe, you know, um, and thank you so much for watching.